Hi, this is David Carr, um, a writer, editor, and web consultant, and itinerant uh, tinkerer with uh, digital things. What I'm going to be talking to you about today is a way that you can create kind of a branded experience around Google Hangouts on Air, which is a, a free Google service that allows you to essentially run your own little TV show, your, a talk show, or something where you monologue on, like I'm going to be doing for, for some of this. And I see that Chris and Jim Gold have signed in. Uh, they are the, the geeks on tour. I'll be talking about them a little bit later. And I wanted to ask Chris to join me a little bit because they hold a regular weekly TV show using this same tech. Geeks on Tour is a business where they travel around the country in an RV most of the time, giving presentations at various campgrounds about how to use technologies like Picasa for photos, uh, how to use your smartphone, uh, how to take great digital photos, edit them, share them. So they are technology educators to the, the traveling world. And in fact, they, they just got back from Cuba. I don't think they took the RV to Cuba. But they have been doing this longer than I have. This is all of my second Hangout on Air session. Uh, what I saw, though, when I was researching Hangouts on Air is that one of the things people point out to as it not being a, uh, a complete webinar program is that it doesn't include the usual capture things that marketers like to capture leads, capture contacts. A uh, political campaign might be interested in capturing voter contacts of so people who sign in to one of these sessions where they have one of their candidates speaking. So what you can have is a, a branded experience on a WordPress site where you capture a little bit of information about people and then you also follow up with them with the information about how to access the Hangouts. A little bit of... <laughs> Jim says the bridge to Cuba is not complete. Uh, well, yeah, go down to the keys, but uh, uh, then you have to get a real fast start. Anyway, um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to sh show you some things. Uh, this, this basically started because I was trying to organize a webinar for which I had no budget available. Uh, it was on something I do for uh, Toastmasters organizations where I'm trying to show them another way or a better way of hosting a, a club website where they publish, publicize their club, uh, engage with members, engage with potential members. And that is not a money-making activity. It's uh, somewhat of a money-losing activity right now. So I didn't want to spend $100 a month on a professional webinar service. And I realized that, that Hangouts and Air really gave me everything that I needed. So let me show you a few things, which is kind of the point here. Uh, and then later on, I'm going to have uh, Chris Gold come in and talk a little bit about actually putting on one of these sessions and how to do it effectively, which is something that I'm still learning. So let's see, wait a minute. Did I do the right thing here? i share my whole screen. And you might see the control panel that I'm using off to the right. And this is a little trick I learned the other day because it will allow you to share your screen selectively. Um, but at one point where I was doing that, I had the wrong screen selected. And so I was yammering on about something that nobody in the audience could see. So I'm sharing the whole screen instead. But the reason I dragged this over to the side is if I put it in the center, we get this really trippy Hall of Mirrors thing. It's kind of distracting. 
So I, I don't want that. I'll, I'll drag it over to the side. And then when it's time to stop sharing, I will stop. And that's the slide I'll show at the end with all my contact information. But here's where you came in to enter this session. Unless you're watching on YouTube, this stream also goes out to YouTube. It goes out live. And these sessions are also automatically archived on YouTube for, for later replay, which is cool because one thing so that people run into to problems with in, in some of the, the more professional webinar environments is they will be recording something and they will forget to press the, or they'll be giving a presentation, they'll forget to press the start recording button and so it won't get recorded. I was inspired partly by this session, uh, this um, blog post and video, uh, and I'll share a link with you afterwards to this. It was about running a Q&A session using Google Hangouts on Air. And this gentleman recommended uh, a product called uh, Lead Pages which is a way of creating landing pages for all sorts of marketing campaigns. So they, they have a template for, um, for hosting uh, uh, registrations for Hangout-based events. But I, of course, thought, well, I have this thing called RSVP Maker that I could use to do that. Um, and just to explain, RSVP Maker is a project I've been working on for a number of years. It is a plugin to WordPress. WordPress is a free open soft software product for hosting uh, websites. Really, for it's it's your sort of your web-based word processor, your web-based office suite for maintaining your home page, maintaining your blog page. So I can edit any of these pages when I am logged in, as I am right now. Uh, but you can also have event listings using the RSVP Maker plugin. So the, the plugin basically teaches the website to tell time and to only show events that are still upcoming. It's one of the things that annoys me about some websites is they will be promoting things that are already past. Uh, I, I don't like to do that. I like to have the, the information on the site be current. And if there's an opportunity for people to RSVP, they can click through here. They can put in a little bit of information. Uh, and then as a follow-up to that, they'll get a confirmation message that tells them where to find the Hangout on Air in this case. Now, this is this is used for all sorts of events. Uh, it's been around since at least 2009, 2010. The, um, it's uh, used by people all over the world to organize weddings and parties and uh, political events, um, seminars, classes. So it's pretty cool to have created this. I don't make a lot of money off of it um, because it's free. Um, th there is something on the site where if you're really happy with it, you can give me kind of a tip. Uh, uh, PayPal doesn't like me to call it a donation because I'm not a nonprofit. Anyway, uh, the the add-on that specifically supports Hangouts is brand new. Now, Hangouts is something that was introduced a couple of years ago. Uh, this is the very first Hangout in 2011 with uh, Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas. Uh, President Obama did one a little bit after that. So originally you had to be essentially a celebrity in order to be involved in one of these things. I've been involved in other webinars over the years where I had a producer working with me and, and, and that's kind of nice because then the producer can handle all the technical things. If something goes wrong, they can make sure that you do your audio checks ahead of time. Uh, I'm doing this right now as a, as a one-man show. So things probably will go wrong. I was doing one of these the other night where 
I think the the neighbors were watching porn or something, and the the bandwidth was uh, not so good from my home office, and the audio is all choppy. Uh, and then I mentioned the uh, the thing where the um, the video went uh, to the wrong screen. So if you look. So this is a replay of my WordPress for Toastmasters tutorial from Tuesday night. Uh, I was actually able to edit that. There's some actually some editing tools built into YouTube where you can clip out the part where you screwed up. So that's one of the things I love about video is that I can edit out my mistakes uh, after the fact. So we went from well, I am to this being really democratized, and these are the Geeks on Tour. This is their their weekly TV show on Hangouts um, on Air. Uh, again, I'll have have Chris in a little bit later to talk about how she puts that together. So they advertise that on their their website. They don't use RSVP Maker, but maybe I'll talk them into it. We'll see. Now, where do you find Hangouts? Well, it was it was introduced as part of the Google Plus service. They've taken some steps towards making it more independent. So now you can go to hangouts.google.com. And there are actually a couple of different things going on here. The basic Hangout service is sort of a video conference call where you can invite friends or colleagues in, and you can talk to each other, and you can do screen sharing and some of the same things I'm doing. The difference with Hangouts on Air is you can also have a large audience. So these those video chat sessions kind of start to break down if you get more than four or five people in them. You have too many people talking at once. It gets confusing. The, uh, the camera kind of switches back and forth automatically depending on who's speaking, and it starts going all over the place. Uh, and you can also have bandwidth problems at that point. So. Uh, this is a way of you can invite a few people in as participants, but you can have a very large listening audience. So from Hangouts, we click on this little uh, dot 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 icon here, and we'll find Hangouts on Air down a few steps. And I mentioned this being democratized. If we scroll down, we can see all the Hangouts that are going on right now. And because anybody can do this, there, there's a lot of kids out there doing Hangouts on air about their favorite video games. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of stuff that's not necessarily high quality. Uh, so you want to distinguish yourself by being high quality. You know, one of the ways you do that is by not just having your Hangout on Air be lost in this long list. You want to have your own website, your own branded experience. You want to be tweeting out, driving people to your page. Now, the, the way this is set up, uh, it's, it's not necessarily guaranteed that everybody who attends the Hangout will have gone through my website registration. And for certain things where I'm just trying to get a large audience, where it's more about marketing or ego, uh, that, that's probably OK. Uh, if you're trying to hold a class that you charged for, then, then that might this might not be as good of a solution, because people can find their way to you through Google Plus if they're in your Google Plus uh, network. Uh, there are some ways of, of limiting that. And let's see, I already showed this, didn't I? Let's briefly go through the process of how I would create a new Hangout on Air. Um, and I'm not going to go through actually launching the session because launching a Hangout within a Hangout probably isn't going to work. Um, however, this tutorial that I mentioned over here goes through it in detail, and I will share that with you. Create a Hangout on Air. 
So this is showing the folks that I shared my last um, thing that I published out to. I can edit this. Um, now again, this is promoting to my contacts on Google Plus is what you're controlling down here. Um, but there are other ways we can promote this. And it gives me the option of either doing something now or later. So if, I, if I'm going to do an event that I want to publicize and try and get a good audience for, I probably want to do it later. And as of right now, this is going to be scheduled for tonight. Put in the description. And I don't want to broadcast this out to the world, so I'll just broadcast it to Car Communications right now. And I'll create this. And now I have sort of a blank template. Now there's something in here where you can add a trailer. You can pre-record a little video, include it here as something for people to watch ahead of time. If they happen to find their way to this page before the thing actually starts, they can see a, a preview of what you're going to do. Or you can actually have a still image, so it's not just that blurry picture of me appearing there. But the most important thing that I need off this page in order to do the setup for RSVP Maker is I click on this little thing over the side that says Links. I get this little pop-up that gives me my event page and the YouTube page. Now, I mentioned that people can watch this on YouTube, but they won't be, even if they watch it live, they won't have access to the Q&A app. So to get them into the full experience, we really want to drive them to the event page. So what I would do if I was setting this up as an RSVP maker event, I would go into my WordPress website that has this plugin installed. And I'm going to create a new event, and it's going to be a parallel to what I put up on the site. And I'm going to go down here, and again, it's by default set for 7 p.m., and say that I want to collect RSVPs. And there's lots of other options, but right now I just want to say that I'm going to collect RSVPs. And I'll publish that. And then I'm going to come back down here to where it talks about more options being available for a confirmation message. A confirmation message can, uh, on some things, is just a simple thank you, or if I was promoting a, a potluck dinner. It might be thank you and, and remember to let me know what you're going to bring for the potluck. Uh, but for a hangout, I'm going to specifically go in and put in that event page address and also the YouTube address. And I'm going to create my confirmation message. So that as soon as somebody clicks RSVP, they should get this confirmation that has this information. And I have an opportunity to customize this before I save it. We'll just save it. And once I've done that, I can also come down here and say I want to add a reminder message. So two hours before the event, I want this reminder message to go out. And this could include some, some additional information. I might drive people to another link. In, in the case of this 
webinar, I might have said, why don't you look at this tutorial first and put in a link to that. Let's see. So I'll save that. So now I have a confirmation message and a reminder that's supposed to run two hours before the start of the event. And if I go down to the bottom again, a lot of, a lot of stuff in here. Let's see. I could also create something that's going to go out after the event. So it's three hours after the start. So if, it, if you had a one hour thing and you set this for one hour, it would go immediately after the event is over. You might want to leave yourself a buffer. Uh, and I say that from the experience of having this uh, session the other day that didn't go so well. Uh, I might want to have a chance to edit that video uh, and change the link before before I drive them to the replay of something that kind of didn't come out as well as I wanted it to. So now I've got, I can save this. And now I've got a, a confirmation, a reminder. So. and uh, something for, for after the event. Now, in, in order for all this to work, there, there are a couple of parameters that are very important to set that people often don't set on these sites. Uh, one is to get reliable email delivery. Uh, there's a section in here where you can set up a mail server that will work with your WordPress site to uh, send these email messages out from a real account. And that will help improve email deliverability. If you were trying to scale this up, you might sign up with a service like SendGrid, which uh, does bulk email delivery. Um, I've done some work in the past with integrations with the MailChimp mailing list service. And I think there, there may be some, some possibilities that I could do some, some add-ons to work with that. But, uh, but for right now, the, the, the easiest thing is just to set up a, a mail account on your server and to put in your username and password uh, into this system. I, do, I don't recommend using your personal email account. I would set up a, an account just for this purpose. And the other thing, because we have all this reminder functionality, is make sure you set your time zone. Because by default, WordPress comes uh, set to uh, UTC time, Greenwich Mean Time, basically. So in, unless you live in the U UK, uh, your that default setting is probably wrong. Let's see. And I should show you what the, the messages look like when they come in. Let me see if we can find this. So I'll get a message. I'm oh, sorry, Sue, I didn't mean to show your email address. This is a spam uh, entry. I haven't gotten a lot of spam on this, but but sometimes that does happen. There's these little spam programs that run around finding anything that looks like a web form um, and responding to it. Uh, you could put one of those little CAPTCHA puzzles uh, on these forums. Um, I generally don't because it's just another another reason for people not to fill out your form. I'd rather deal with. Uh, a little bit of spam. Uh, and so, and, and you, you guys should, if you signed up on the website, you should have gotten something saying confirming that you RSVP'd for this event. And that should also include the, uh, the, the links. 
uh, to uh, to the hangout. Now, you, it, it, it may well be that if you became a professional who was holding webinars on a regular basis, that it would make sense for you to upgrade to something else. You might stick with Hangouts on Air and sign up for a subscription to a professional uh, landing page service like this, this Lead Pages one uh, that was mentioned by this other authority. Um, or you, you might find that the email messages aren't being delivered uh, reliably enough out of my setup here. But it's something to get started with. Uh, I think this is uh, pretty cool. And you may find that it grows with you because I'm going to be working on making it better uh, as well as I can. Let's see. I think those are the, the main things I wanted to show through with the screen sharing. So I'm going to try and, if I can, invite. Okay, where do I do this? I'm going to invite Chris into this session. Yeah. Okay. So she should be getting an invitation. I haven't I haven't done this live, but you're supposed to, you are supposed to be able to do this in the middle. And uh, let me try and address some of the questions that were posted before. Uh, is RSVP Maker within Google Hangout, or do I have to install anything in my browser? Uh, you know, RSVP Maker is a plug-in to WordPress, so you need uh, a WordPress-based website. This is from my friend uh, Leda Lima, who's one of my friends in Toastmasters. Um, one of the things I said uh, at our Toastmasters Club meeting on Friday is that I would help anybody in the club set one of these up if they had a reason they wanted to do it. So uh, we we have RSVP Maker as part of what we use to organize meetings on the site. It's just kind of behind the scenes. Um, let's say I see Brad Smith. Do you see how many are viewing on the Hangouts and? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have a huge audience today, but then again, I'm creating a piece of video that I'll be able to put on my website and promote in, in other ways. Uh, I had nine viewers a minute ago, and it just went down to seven, so I said something wrong, apparently. And um, and let's see, I think total audience. Yeah. It, it, but yes, it's something that you can interactively see. When I'm screen sharing, I don't see some of the stuff that's going on on the Hangouts control panel. So that's one of the issues. I told you I had this thing where I was sharing the wrong screen. A bunch of people were posting messages saying we're not seeing the right thing. And... Um, and uh, I, I didn't see them because I, I was sharing the wrong screen. Uh, actually, Chris has asked that I invite Jim in instead of her. So I will do that. Now, they, they are a dynamic duo where Chris ran a training company, computer training company. And... Jim at some point was her was her um, network administrator, and then she started fraternizing somewhere along the way. Let's see. All right, so maybe she's telling Jim to come in because Jim is the techie of the two. Chris specifi uh, specializes in translating things into English. So I'm hoping that Jim will join me in a moment. Actually, I think he's here. And I need to put my 
headset on so that I can hear him. Oh. Jim? Yeah, hi, David. Hey. All right. Tell me how this is supposed to be done. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the invitation uh, that you made, actually, Chris did uh, join. Do you yeah. not see her down there in the film strip? Oh, sorry. I, I, I see her now. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but, I, but, I, but then I saw this note saying that yeah, well, I should invite you instead. So I no, this, this is fine. Uh, Actually, now we seem to be in uh, twice. So Chris is in with hers, and I'm in with mine. Gang's and, all here. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so we have actually three people in the film strip down there. I don't know if other people are seeing it. Uh, yeah, I set these things up for our show every week. That's my job. And it is a, you know, it's a process that, that I've learned... Uh, through some trial and error and some a lot, of trial. a lot of trial and error and and I have there's a guy out there his name is Ronnie Benser I'd like to give him a, a little plug he is the hangout helper and he has a business of helping people with these hangouts uh, it's a it's a membership site so but the way I normally set mine up, and I just did the show for this coming Sunday, so it's kind of fresh in my mind, and it it is just such a cool technology. We do this because it's fun, and we can, and it's free. And, and how, we, how long have you been doing it? We have done 65 of these What Does This Button Do shows. About a year and a half. About a year and a half. So of mostly weekly shows, sometimes, like when we were in Cuba, there's no internet in Cuba for, <laughs> for this kind of stuff. Uh, or, you know, when we're in places where internet is not robust enough, you need quite a bit of bandwidth in order to do these shows. So that's, that's an important concept. Uh, otherwise, it just kind of falls apart. But, and have have you been on shows where where the bandwidth was fine when you started and halfway through there was some issue, some congestion or, or drop off in bandwidth? Oh yeah, without a doubt, that'll happen. And you know, there's not a whole lot you can do. There is a setting though that you can put up in the in your settings, the little gear that comes up when you move your mouse, where you can actually tune the bandwidth all the way down to just voice if you want and then there'll just be an icon but if you if you reduce that things will pixelate but you'll still have a good uh, voice which is very important right. sound is very important on these things right. but, but voice is actually the most important part of video in some ways yeah it really is so I use uh, a mixer. I have a, a small eight uh, port mixer and lavalier microphones. I'm not using those right now, but uh, one thing that happens is you'll get you'll get echo, and that's something that happens regularly. So, as you have there, a good headset is a good way to do these things. That way you're not going to get the echo that we were getting a few minutes ago when we first got on. Okay. And what's the business reason for doing this? Because I, you guys, you travel around, you stop and give seminars to travelers about technology for travelers, basically. Right. Uh, and you have... Uh, an online library that you sell a subscription access to where people can come in and and see your videos um, what what is what does the hangout actually do for you because you don't you don't directly make money off of it but you're right. presumably it's marketing you're building an audience it's all it's all marketing and even the live per, uh, seminar that we do at computer clubs computer user groups 
RV rallies and even sometimes in personal and in homes and that kind of stuff. All of that is just to drive people to become members of our membership website. We charge $68 for a one-year membership for a library of tutorial videos to learn about things mostly of interest to travelers to plan and preserve and share their, their travels. So Google Maps is big on our website. Google Photos, which is the new stuff out there with, with Google, is really, really neat stuff. So people who have these devices are eager to learn the information. So that's, that's where we go with it. And we've mm -hmm. found that a membership website is a good way to present that and make money. It's, it's, we actually do make a living off our website. Very cool. Very cool. But I can, let's see, ask him if he can hear. Can, can you hear, Chris? I can hear. Can yep. Oh, okay. You might want to mute yours then so we don't get an echo. <laughs> um, yeah, so much. YouTube has to be free, right? I mean, it's you can't post videos on YouTube and charge for them and expect anybody to watch, even our members. So we do the weekly shows using the Hangouts for free on YouTube. But if you're a member, then you get the show notes. That's, that's become our model. Okay. We write right, up notes, cool. and if you're, yeah, they're on our website behind the membership login. But the videos themselves are totally free. It is just so cool that you can broadcast <laughs> to the world, and as soon as you're done, it's a saved video that anybody can watch on YouTube. Right. It's it's just amazing technology. And you don't use any uh, any special system or lead capture thing or anything to, to promote these at this point? No, we don't, we? Which, is why, which is why we're watching here today. I think the okay. RSVP sounds like a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> All right. We'll have to check well, it out. We it's, do uh, our mailings, though. We, we use a Weber. So we have a, a fairly substantial um, uh, membership on there. It's all free. Uh, right. for our, from our newsletters and sign-ups. So we have a pretty good size mail list that we can send invitations out with. And we have a pretty good following on Google+. Plus. So we have circles of people who have you know, expressed an interest to be part of it. Yeah. You know, I, I hadn't signed into Google+, Plus in many months before I started uh, exploring this. Uh, I, I mean, I know there's still active communities on Google Plus for certain things, or, uh -huh. uh, what, what, but uh, you know, where does it fit in the balance when, as, as, as compared with promotions that you might do on Twitter or Facebook, trying to drive th people to these same events? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Google, Google Plus is going through major changes. Nobody knows where they're going. We really we use it where it's where it's integrated and built in, and there really kind of isn't any choice. But we don't use it independently. Okay. All right. Let me just uh, ask uh, answer a couple of questions from the, the outside world. Uh, Andrew Byrne, who's another friend from uh, Toastmasters, asks if there's a basic reference manual to teach WordPress and the webinar with RSVP Maker. Um, there's a ton of books uh, and other online resources about how to use WordPress. The, uh, although some of them are, are not for people who are just trying to run a site and, and publish, they're, they're for techies, and so Sometimes you have to sort through things that are for people like me who get into, you know, customizing and writing plugins and designing themes. If you just w want to know how to use the software, there's not something as straightforward. RSVP Maker has been documented in a very ad hoc way by me over the years with uh, a bunch of blog posts, and there's a do one documentation page that po points to the most relevant blog posts. 
uh, it's a little bit messy. Uh, I probably should publish an ebook or something on that and see if people would would pay five dollars for it or something. But uh, um, that's that's something to uh, to experiment with in the future. Um, uh, Aleda asked, uh, what is their website? I think she means Geeks on Tour. So it's just geeksontour.com, right? That's correct. Um, that is correct. And there's a menu um, on the weekly show if they want to see how that works. Weekly show, right. right. So you, and so you can watch the the replay of the one from last week? Or are you doing one on Sunday? Yes. Yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> so and so it's, it's, it's almost, it's almost every week? Uh, or how, how close to every week do you come? Almost every week. We've been doing it a year and a half, and we're on episode 65. 66. 66. Okay. And I mentioned Toastmasters a couple of times. In Toastmasters, they tell you that if stuff goes wrong with your audio visuals, then you're supposed to have like a printout to hand people of your slides. Here, you're kind of stuck, right? You're 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 at the mercy of the technology. All right. Um, is there a, a plan? Actually, I, I, one thing I wondered, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. I mean, if my connection dropped in the middle of this session, would the Hangout end? Or would I be able to come back in and restart it? Would everybody else still be there, potentially? Do, do you know? Yes. Uh, it'll stay on for 10 minutes. And after that, it will drop if you don't get back in. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's the sure. thing. You can also, uh, in some instances, have a second person on as a host or a second host. So those links that you have there uh, when you start the show are important. And okay. that link to invite others into the film strip is very important. So I have a... I have a, a document that I copy all of those links to before I start the show and I have those available to me so that I can uh, actually go in and show the um, you know if I if I get dumped out it gives me a way back in very okay. quick all so right that's an important thing all right well I, I'm glad I have got that that tip from you now so that uh, I'll be able to recover, but this this one actually has has gone okay. I I, I was nervous. I, I I did have this semi disaster on Tuesday night. I was trying to impress people, and I don't know how impressed they came away. But this this this, this was this was all right. I, I won't have to edit out too much, except maybe the the stuff at the very beginning where I was telling people I'll be starting in just a minute. So. One thing that Jim has come up with for our shows, which I think is just brilliant, this is a live show, right? So what's kind of weird is when people, lots of times people will go on a couple minutes in advance, right? Rather than that the exact time it's supposed to start. And they either keep getting your trailer video or they get nothing and if hmm. you're a, if you're a minute or two late they're saying well where are they what's going on Jim hmm. starts the live broadcast a couple minutes before time but he has a graphic that he puts up that says St please stand by <laughs> <laughs> so okay. people can join a couple minutes early I mean they can start watching a couple minutes early and they know that everything is on track okay you have a countdown clock or something, or? No, no. I just have a please stand by. We go live a few minutes before the show, and I have this old, uh, you know, from, from the, the black and white from TV. the black and white TV. <laughs> please stand by. You need to watch the show, David. <laughs> <laughs> and then after I the think fact, he did, but he can't. Well, sorry, I, I, I have seen, I've seen the replay. I, I, yeah, I, right. I, we edit that out of the replay, just like you say. So we, we right. chop off that beginning for the same copy. Yeah, and actually one, one thing that I'm uh, changing is, is in the, the follow-up note directing people to the replay, 
I've decided I'm going to direct them to a page on my website so that I can I can have that pre-programmed to go out but I have the opportunity to go back in and, and clean up that video and put the the edited cleaned up um, uh, version of the video on that page or on that blog post right. so uh, it's, Looking for a way of covering my tracks, uh, hiding the evidence. Another thing you can do, David, is to have another person inside the, the Hangout who is actually running it for you. To do this thing single-handed is it, really tough. It's the one-armed paper hanger type thing right. because there are so many things that you need to keep track of. And if somebody else is running the show for you, a producer, for instance, they have control over who are who has focus on the during the show. Right. Another thing that we do is we have an. A for, for that, I would audience. need either a budget or a friend. But uh, <laughs> you, you can call on us anytime. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, one of you our. watch out what you offer. I might take you up on it. <laughs> well, I hope you do. One of our very early shows we did not realize that the sound wasn't working. So we're chatting away here <laughs> for like 20 minutes before one of our viewers finally got through to us in a text message or something and said, we can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll be back in Fort Lauderdale uh, next week. We should get together live. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking that one of the things I might do in the new year is do my own weekly show or monthly show or something where I invite in guests who are doing something nifty on the web and you're, you you guys certainly would be on my list <laughs> oh, cool. so yeah. thanks very much for for helping me out with this and thanks everybody who attended our pleasure we'll look forward to looking into RSVP maker yeah okay cool now the Thank other you. thing you can do David okay. is you can stop the show you can stop the broadcast and keep the people who are in your in your uh, film strip stay on afterwards ah, okay all right well we, we might it, I might just we just might talk amongst ourselves for, for a moment here uh, but but I am gonna stop the broadcast and let other people get back to work uh, thanks very much for tuning in and RSVP make uh, something happen for yourself. All right, cool. Goodbye. <laughs>